how to adjust the brightness and contrast of your image. Because a lot of times when you take a photograph with your camera or your phone, sometimes the image comes out uh, way too bright or even way too dark. So I wanna show you how to fix that in the easiest way possible. So this is a follow along practice video. I've included the link in the description below for you to download for free the image or images that I'm using. Yes! So I'm going to hit the letter D just to get my default colors back to black and white. And notice this image. Notice how it's very dark. So I'm sure you understand histograms if you're a photographer, but also the histograms are really important to understand as a graphic designer, a multimedia or digital fine artist. I'm gonna go up to window and down to histogram just so that I can see a histogram. Now I don't care about the color histogram, so I'm just gonna check luminosity. And this is what I would see on the back of my camera. We all know that the left side of the histogram is pure black, the right side is pure white, and everything in between is all the levels of gray. And generally, we want that histogram to be shifted to the right, because this is where more of the tones are, and they're better quality tones. So we need to make this brighter for sure. So let me show you a very easy way to adjust the brightness and contrast of your image. Just come up to image, go down to adjustments and choose brightness and contrast. It's gonna load a box in front of your image that you can grab the title bar and move it to wherever you want. Now, generally I would say with today's versions of Photoshop, which are so sophisticated, click the auto button right away and just see where Photoshop thinks it should be. I think it did a really good job. I mean, that looks nice. I have a full range of tones, obviously based on the histogram, I don't have pure white yet, but as you'll learn in the Munker White illusion videos that I've created, that our eye will deceive us. So it's really about relative tones. Relatively speaking, this looks like a brighter image that has a full range from white to black. Now our eyes auto adjust. So if you wanna see what it looked like before, just toggle off the preview icon here. Wow, that's really dark and dull, isn't it? Now you can always manually come up and drag these sliders to wherever you want. Now, if you wanna start back from zero, instead of having to drag it back to exactly zero or select it and hit the zero to get it back to zero. An advanced tip is if you hold down the alt or option key, it changes your cancel button to a reset button, allowing you to reset everything. And I like to do this because I see a lot of students that will just cancel to close it. They'll come back, image, adjustments, brightness, and contrast, and then they'll start all over. But remember, all you have to do is hold down the alt or option key and the cancel button will change the reset in pretty much every dialog box in Photoshop where you have an okay and cancel selection. So actually, I think the auto did a really good job. I might tweak it a little bit just so I can feel like I had a part of it, but I think that's great. Now, one thing to take note of, whenever you brighten up a dark image, you're going to reveal a lot of noise in the dark shadow areas. I'm gonna zoom in by holding down the command and space bar to temporarily change my cursor to a magnifying glass and click. I'm at 200%. I'll let go of the command key and just a space bar, I'll click and drag. So I'm at 200% to make sure you can see this through video. You really don't need to view your image more than at 100% resolution, which is found right down here. This box always tells you what the magnification of your image is. And again, you never really need to go above 100%. So do you see all these pixelation? There's actually a little bit of JPEG artifacting. Do you see the color shifts? So that's, that's a potential problem. I'll hit Command-0 to shrink it back in screen. If I toggle the preview on and off, this is a way better solution. So I'm gonna click OK. Another advanced tip, photographers, designers, digital media artists, pretty much everybody always has to do something in a creative way that's not specifically photographic. So if I wanted to take this image and screen it back to be behind some text or on a website, if you go back up to image adjustments and brightness and toggle on these legacy controls and you pull that brightness way up and that contrast down, now watch this. I'm gonna click okay, then I'm gonna go up again, brightness and contrast, and I can choose legacy, and I can do it all over again. Now, as I bring the brightness up, I get these white hot spots. So lowering the contrast makes those go away. But this gives me a, a nice screen back effect that's very different than lowering the opacity. So you can repeat this over and over and over until you get the density of an image that you like. So I reverted back to the original brightness and contrast adjustment that we made. Now notice what it did, it applied it to the background base image, which means if I save this, close it, that setting is gonna be forever baked into the image. And if I try to adjust it again after I've baked it in, it's gonna degrade the image. That's why all the adjustments up in the menu bar for image adjustments, these are all destructive edits, which means 
just what it says. It's going to kind of degrade your image when you apply them, save them. You can never really undo them in an easy way that doesn't alter your image quality. The good thing is you have all of these controls as adjustment layers. Adjustment layers can be found right over here under adjustments. Yes! In this video, I'm going to show you how to take this image and make it look like this one with the brightness and contrast adjustment layer dodging and burning on that layer mask and some minor spot retouching. So this is a follow along practice video. I've included the link in the description below for you to download for free the image or images that I'm using. Yes! So as I look at this image, it appears a bit flat and dull to me, maybe a tiny bit dark. Remember, you can always go up to window and toggle on the histogram. Okay, it's it's not a bad histogram, but there are no real whites or light tones, right? We can see that they're missing right over here. So that's good to know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a non-destructive brightness and contrast adjustment layer because that's pretty much the easiest way to fix this. But before I do that, there's some things that I don't like, like I find this elevator thing distracting. I find that fireman safety lock distracting. I find this little bit right here of color distracting. I like the grunge on the elevator doors, but I don't like these little white dots and scratches. This little string is very visually distracting as well as the string down here. So I think I'm gonna retouch that out real quick. And instead of doing it on my background layer, I can either hit Command or Control J to duplicate it, or I can just hit this plus inside of a square, which will add a blank new layer. And you can tell because it's transparent, right? You see the white and gray checkerboard. Transparent layers are indicated by this white and gray checkerboard pattern all throughout Photoshop. That's an indication of a transparency inside Photoshop. And let's go ahead and just grab the spot retouching tool, which is this one right here. If you don't see yours, just click and drill down until you see it and then select it. Remember your left and right bracket keys to make your brush bigger or smaller. And you just want your brush to be a little bigger than what you're retouching. And you just click and it automatically gets rid of it. Now this one, I'm on right bracket key. Remember over by the letter P and I'm gonna paint over it. And Photoshop's gonna look around and figure it out. It's gonna look around and figure it out. Now I'm gonna hold down the command and space bar to zoom in, left bracket key for a smaller brush. Maybe you just want your brush to be a little bit bigger than what you're retouching. Cause I, I wanna remove the things that are distracting. I can hold the space bar key to pan around. There's a little string I don't like. I don't like that. And make my brush a little bigger with the right bracket key. So I can just do some quick clicks and paints. Get a couple at once there with that one. Anything that is visually distracting. Now you have to be careful not to go crazy. Again, I'm a little bit zoomed in. Notice my magnification's at 200%. Really, you don't have to go above 100, but sometimes if you go up a little larger, it does make it kind of quicker and easier to see the problems. Okay, I think I fixed all the major retouching issues, the things that were bothering me. I'll hit Command or Control Zero to go back to full screen, maybe because I'm have a problem. I'll get rid of that little dot right there. Now let's toggle off our layer that we just made all the retouches on. Toggle them on and off. You see how visually busy it was before? I mean, her eye was ignoring it, but notice how much more crisp and clean it looks. I don't see those little lines in the outfit. I still have the grunge of the atmosphere, but not all the distracting elements. Now you can click over here on the layer one. If you double click that name, it automatically selects itself and you can just type retouch. Enter. That way, if you get 10 layers or 100 layers, you'll remember which layer has your retouching on it. Now, the reason we put this on as new layers because I still haven't permanently altered this background layer, which is great. I feel like it's a little lifeless. So let's add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer. And I just think it needs to be a little brighter. We're in that little gray area because the brightness and contrast adjustment is a universal adjustment. It's applying the same settings to the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows, and everything in between. So for me, I think she looks good. The doors look good here at this brightness setting, but I find that I'm blowing out the lighter wall around it. And now that lighter wall, I'm finding kind of distracting. That's why we have these layer masks. And this layer, the brightness and contrast layer, is the one selected because you can see the lighter gray. But the thing that's most selected is the layer mask. See the white corners? Because if I click over here, now the adjustment is most selected. But I click here, the layer mask is most selected. And what I'm going to do is paint on that layer mask. I'm going to hit B for the brush. I'll hit D for default colors just to get my black and white over here going. And if I don't have black in the foreground, I need black to paint on this white mask. 
So I'll just click these double arrows or hit the X key. I'll take a quick look at my options bar and I'll see I'm at a normal blend mode 100%, which is where I want to start off. I'll tap the right bracket key a little and I'll just paint. All right, see I'm bringing back too much of the original. Command Z, because remember, toggle that on and off. Look how dull and flat and dark that looks. So I definitely like the vibrance and the brightness of her, but I can't paint back at 100% of its original tone. So what I'll do is I'll just drag this down to maybe 40%. A scrubby slider is when you hover over a word and your cursor changes to a left or right pointing arrow and you just drag it back and forth to vary the opacity. It's like bring back 40% of that original darkness. I feel like that's not bad. It gives me texture in the wall. You can hit Commander or Control minus to zoom out a touch. That way I can just, with a big soft brush, I can pass across the top once. Now if I pass again, it's going to do another 40%. So if I wanted something on the very edge right here, I could do that. So toggle off what I did. Flat, Command-0 to fit in screen. I'll toggle that eyeball back on. A lot more interest in, in dynamic coloring. Remember, an adjustment layer will affect every single layer below it. Now there's some tricks to get around that, which you're going to learn in this series. But just know that whether I have 100 layers, 1,000 layers, or just these two layers, the brightness and contrast is affecting all the stuff on this retouching layer and everything on the background layer, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want. So that's how you edit a mask. And if you want to see your mask specifically, just hold down the Alt or Option key and click on it, and you'll see your mask in the display window. Remember, with mask, white reveals, black conceals, and then any shade of gray partially reveals and conceals. Click the eyeball icon to bring it back to regular view. Save this as a PSD working file if you want to continue editing it. And I've got to say that while we're here, there does seem to be a problem with the converging lines. Let's take this one step further. If you hit Command Option Shift Letter E or Control Alt Shift Letter E, it's going to compress every single layer to the very, very top layer. So once you've compressed everything to the very top layer, go up to Filter and down to Camera Raw Filter, which is going to load the Adobe Camera Raw dialog box. And we're going to have a ton of videos about Adobe Camera Raw. It's incredibly powerful. It's where I spend most of my editing if I'm not in Photoshop. I'm going to toggle the basic panel close by clicking this arrow. And I'm going to go down to geometry. You have some automated tools here. I'm just going to say I want all my vertical lines to be vertical. So I'm going to click that and it will automatically straighten up my vertical lines. Let's see what the automatic did. Automatic's not bad either. So here's none, right? Do you see how the lines converge a little bit at the bottom? It's very minor. I think that looks better though. I like that. So I'm going to click OK. So I can toggle this off. That's before. This is after before, after. So sometimes it's okay that it's not perfect and straight. Sometimes converging lines are nice. I think I like this better though. Hope that helps. Hey, if you like this video, it helps. You can help me. Smack it, whack it, and crack a lack it. Take care. I like subscribers. That's awesome. Whoa. Yes! <laughs> oh my God, I did. This is Hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here.